Hi there, I'm here with modern day abolitionist Aaron Cohen and I'm going to take some time to speak with Aaron today and get to know him a little bit better so all of you can get to know Aaron a little bit better too. So Aaron, what, wanted, what made you want to be part of the modern day slavery awareness exhibit? Well, I got an email from, from, from Stephen saying we're doing this show and we would be honored um, if you would participate. And then he mentioned some of the people that were involved. And when I heard, when I heard that Ken was going to be involved, the grand, the great grandson of of Frederick Douglass, right? He's a great grandson. Yes. I thought, wow, what an honor to be able to be at an event with someone like that. Wonderful. And I know that um, you and Steve Collins um, worked together on an amazing portrait series for you, one of which we're sitting beneath today, the shofar image. Can you share us with us a little bit about the image and what it's about? Well, what I remember, Maggie, <laughs> is you directing the shoot and saying, she's saying to me essentially, look at the camera, now, now love it, <laughs> now hate it. <laughs> Put I your hat on, silly take your hat off. Doing the picture and uh, lean back further. No, the picture turned out really, really powerful. You know, it's utilizing the idea of the shofar, which from ancient tradition, there was this gentleman from the biblical story is called, the, you, his name is Jubilee. It's in Genesis 4.21. Father of all who play music. But he was this trumpet player and string player and he would have festivals and free slaves and forgive debts. So it was my graduate study thesis um, at school. And I just became fascinated by it. Um, tried to organize some musical events around it. But the idea of the trumpet is also symbolic of if, uh, the notion that we're at war. You know, the war is really for ourselves. We have a tendency to view ourselves, like our addictions, our ego, our desire to receive for ourselves. All the things of our ego and our self-centeredness, that's, that's the war that's going on. Because we have to give up that. And the, so the trumpet becomes symbolic of your, you know, your own personal apocalypse, the war for yourself. And that's really what slavery is about. So I feel like Stephen captured that in the image in such a way that it's really powerful. I think the uh, image is a really powerful image of Aaron Cohen. Um, there is a series of three images beneath it. Can you share with us a little bit about what's going on there? Well, from doing the anti-slavery work, I've developed this uh, passion for the reunion. When you find a victim in slavery or human trafficking, you have the ability to move them through the system. There comes a point in time where you ha have the opportunity to reunite them with their parents. So we call those the reunions. and. Um, I noticed that uh, Stephen seemed to really like the reunion shots, and so he he hired some models and put together a, a reenactment. You'll see that in the centerpiece. That's the because uh, we didn't have any good footage of blondes being reunited <laughs> with their moms. All the stories ended up ended up darker than that. But we have some actual reunions from on the left and right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and those are from Haiti and. Um, I was just recently in Haiti and was reunited with, uh, with both, both of the children from the reunions. Oh, wow, that's incredible. Now, I know the, the rejoiceful reunion part of the process in terms of rescuing victims is very important to you. Why is that particular moment so poignant for you? There's something about the reunion. When I first saw slavery, it was in Sudan in the 1990s, and I remember these were slaves that had spent years in plantations in the north with the worst conditions, especially for the women. But when I saw for that first time a father embracing his son or a mother reaching out and grabbing her child and there's this gasp for breath, they, they lose all of their air and then they begin to cry and hold each other that they're free. It's just, it's really powerful. You, you feel essentially the spirit of, for lack of a better term, I don't, you feel the spirit of God. It's very powerful. Wow, that's an amazing description. Thank you so much for that. Um, I know that you went on a recent trip to Mexico, I believe. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey and what it was like and why you were there? What we do is we try to help uh, create task forces on human trafficking. So if there's an existing task force, we go in and we try to help them 
add stakeholders that make it so that when you rescue victims, you have an A to Z solution for the, for the, for the women or the children who are being rescued. You can't move somebody from point A to point B, but with a task force, you can move them from A to Z. And so I was in Mexico, in Tijuana, working to s help set up and establish the task force through the police secretary there. And there's a distinguished uh, saint in Mexico, Mother Antonia, who's famous for moving into the Tijuana La Mesa Federal Prison 30 years ago and living at the worst place on earth and taking care of some of the most difficult people on earth with an incredible saintly quality. So they're naming boulevards and parks after her. So it's kind of like being in an episode of the Blues Brothers. You're, <laughs> you're rolling around with these nuns in sunglasses who are, who are rock stars everywhere you go. And when you show up at the chief of police office with those nuns, uh -huh. they get down their knees and kiss her ring. You know, it's, wow. it's like walking in with Elvis. A celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> No, everybody's been really, really positive in Tijuana, and we're starting to see a turnaround of the gang war that's, that's destroyed the economy for the last 10 years there, down there. I think that with the, uh, some of the new leadership that's coming in, that there's hope for Tijuana. Um, are you going to have some upcoming trips in terms of continuing to rescue slaves so they can eventually become survivors? Or are you um, taking a step back from traveling for the time being? Well... I don't ever see myself as rescuing anybody, first of all. I'm still trying to rescue myself. But I feel like I can participate in... It's almost like this. I am a force. And as long as I'm directional, I'm weak. But when I detach myself from myself and I attach myself to power, to the omnipresence of... I feel like we have this ability in this cause to attach ourselves to something eternal. And... I'm excited about that. I'm always excited about that. We had discussions today about the campaign against some of these big online companies that are selling girls on, on the internet. So I'm excited to go to New York and get involved in a campaign against Backpage and Village mm -hmm. Boys who Absolutely. are commodifying women and children and they're being sold every day online on the service. And some people are saying, you know, well, they turn over leads to the FBI and the CIA and counterterrorism and they do all of these great things and they try to make them out to be as if like they're helping but they're providing a service that women and children are being sold on so I'm the next thing for me is the human trafficking investigations in New York wonderful and New York is going to bring a whole new series of of investigations and, and learning and new projects for you is well really yeah I mean New York is interconnected like one of the things is like you can, the, the majority of human trafficking victims in our country come from runaway kids. Mm -hmm. they, they, they comprise the biggest demographic. A couple hundred thousand kids run away every year and a certain percentage of them end up being turned out by pimps in classical prostitution. Oh They're prostituted and we're starting to change our view of how we view prostitution in the country which I think is good. But essentially the runaway issue is one thing. But the other thing is, is that to understand that human trafficking is the fastest growing illegal business in the world. It's already passed arms sales and it's in position to pass drug sales. And when it does, it'll be, be because of the sex industry. Pornography is a $100 billion a year business. What about prostitution online? We don't even know the stats on that. But if you do the numbers and you do the math, you realize that just pornography alone is bigger than all media, television, film, music, cable, all media combined is small compared wow. to pornography. So pornography, Hard to believe. pornography and prostitution, and then you factor in sex tourism and companion industries like modeling, like um, hostessing, like dancing, and you realize we're, we're talking about something that is not a novelty thing. It's, it's a sign. It's a sign that something's happening. That these industries are continuing to grow and get bigger and bigger. Absolutely. Well, if we think we're going to go on and be with our freedom while other people are not free on in record levels, I think that's a false assumption. So for me, slavery is a sign that not just those people have lost their freedom, but that perhaps all of our freedoms are at jeopardy. Absolutely. I completely agree with you, Aaron. And, um, you know, one of the other pieces that I think are so important about sharing about this cause and talking about human trafficking and modern day slavery awareness is education and having other people in the community that are not aware of what's going on globally 
and even in our own neighborhoods and in our community is to teach them about what is happening. And so we are so honored that you're going to be one of our speakers tomorrow evening at the Modern Day Slavery Awareness Exhibit at the Hourglass Art and Wine Gallery in Rancho Cucamonga. And you are going to... That was um, a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're going to join us with Richard Leger and his wife, Sandy. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about that and, and what brought you to yeah, wanting you know, to speak? Uh, I'm really excited to come to the event tomorrow. For a number of reasons, um, I want to meet Dr. Morris, you know, of mm -hmm. course. I also, um, I'm excited to share solutions. I've spent a lot of time studying the issue of slavery and from an ancient perspective to today. And one thing I can tell you is, is that we all have this ability to make an impact on the lives of people around us. And uh, I think earlier I mentioned the personal apocalypse, you know. Well, we're all like a little stone. You throw it in the water and these circles come out. So my inner circle is going to be here for the event. I'm excited because Richard and Sandy Leger are the founders of Abolish Slavery. And, and what they've done is they've set up this solution for abolishing slavery by establishing law enforcement task forces wherever they're needed. So we've set up, we've set up task forces in California and we're working on New York and there's Israel and there's there's Indonesia and Cambodia, it to grow. And Tijuana, it continues to grow and we continue to see task forces as the real solution A to Z for the victims. So I'm excited for the event because Richard and Sandy will be here talking about task force and how if folks want to get involved in task force mentoring they can. And, and I'm excited to hear Dr. Morris speak about slavery and, and the history of his grandfathers who of course are some of the most distinguished abolitionists of American of history indeed. So it's going to be a great night. Jazz oh, music, well, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. we're so excited to have Aaron Cohen and Richard Leger and his wife Sandy join us tomorrow for the Modern Day Slavery Awareness Exhibit. And Aaron, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Madhvi.